alike by her professors and classmates. Her disappearance is completely out of character for her. We have detectives and agents devoted solely to this case who continue to investigate all tips and leads. We are taking this case very seriously and every avenue of the investigation is being pursued. Investigators are conducting searches, canvassing the local area, and following up on all reported information. While we are reluctant to discuss all the investigative leads and details of this case, as well as the methods, we will utilize every technology and all available resources in this investigation. The resp response from our community has been overwhelmingly positive as we continue our attempts to locate Molly. Understandably, this is a stressful time for the community and for those who love her. We ask that you remain patient and vigilant. Once again, we would like to thank all who have bravely come forward to provide information to date. As we continue in our efforts, we are asking for your assistance in identifying possible bystanders or witnesses. As we have said before, we are considering all potential scenarios. It is possible that Molly came into contact with someone who has caused her harm. This person may not necessarily be a member of our community, but likely has some familiarity with the area. While residents may have developed their own opinions as to what happened to Molly, we are asking everyone to reflect back on the days prior to her disappearance in hopes of recalling details about any persons or vehicles in the area. Individuals who commit violent crimes often display behavior that is recognized by those with whom they live, work, attend school, or are in otherwise close relationships with. Often, there are individuals who are unknowingly associated with the offender of a crime and may be in a position to observe behavioral changes in that person. They will recognize the change and may even question them about it, but will not relate the change to that person's involvement in a crime. Please contact us if you have noticed one or more of the following changes in a person with whom you are associated since Wednesday, July 18th. Change in normal routine, which might include missing school, work, or routine engagements without plausible explanation. A vehicle unexpectedly taken to a repair shop or sold or disposed of. Unexpected or intensive cleaning of a vehicle possibly at an unusual time of day or night. Unexplained lack of contact or inability to get in touch with someone you knew the evening of July 18th into the morning of July 19th. Altering physical appearance, growth or removal of facial hair, change in cut or color of their hair. Displays of anxiety, nervousness, stress, or irritability unexplained injuries, change in, changes in consumption of alcohol, drugs, cigarettes, changes in sleep patterns, interest in the status of the investigation, including, including close attention to media coverage or an unwillingness to discuss, to discuss the investigation. It is often in cases like this that people may have information they do not initially share it for a number of completely understandable reasons. For example, they do not initially feel it was important or assumed someone else may have already notified law enforcement. We encourage you to provide whatever information you may have. Please do not make your own judgment about importance. Please let us assess the relevance of your tip or information. Furthermore, if you are worried about the circumstances in which you obtained this information, your identity can remain anonymous. Today, we are launching a website to allow the community to further assist in this investigation. We invite you to visit the site, findingmolly.iowa.gov. We hope that the visual aids placed up here today and on the webpage will take you back to Wednesday, July 18th. We hope the locations highlighted will jog your memories and help you to recall important details about that day. Please note that the webpage allows, also allows you to submit anonymous tips 
and sign up for updates to the site. Finally, we want to thank all of you, our community, the media, the nation, for standing with us as we work to bring Molly home. At this time, uh, Special Agent in Charge Rick Ron and I will address a few questions. Rick, have you guys identified Molly's cell phone, Fitbit, or We're certainly using every technique that is available to try to track down and locate Molly. I will tell you that uh, we are trying to track the digital uh, footprint of Molly, and so whatever media devices those might be, we're, we're accessing those as best we can. Have you gotten anything so far off for any of her devices? Well, I won't be able to release any of that information and understand that I won't be able to give you any investigative facts, and uh, we will try to keep those close to the vest for the integrity of the investigation, but uh, I will certainly try to answer as much as I can for you. Has yeah. been um, willing to give you Molly's information or access to her account? I'm sorry, what was the first part? Have companies been willing to give you access to Molly's account? Well, those that we have done uh, search warrants, certainly that's part of the investigation. It's common with any investigation that we do. And so we will uh, get together search warrants and subpoenas, and, and they have been honoring those, yes. This task force that you formed, what are you doing different with that that you weren't doing uh, for the three weeks of previous that you were already doing probably? Sure, and the task force actually was started and, and uh, generated at the beginning of the onset of the investigation. I mean, uh, we continue to use as many resources as available, and I will tell you that we've had resources from across the country reach out and be willing to help out. And so we will tap into anybody or any organization that we can to track down Molly. We have several locations that are highlighted on the map. Where are those locations coming from? What's the importance of those locations? Well, those are just locations that were again highlighted on the map for help to uh, remind people if they were to tap into those those sites and to uh, be able to help hopefully generate some ideas or some thoughts so no no specific reason for those certain areas but we are uh, hoping that people will look at the map to, again to be able to to jog their memory basically There's yes, been a sir. lot of resources pulled into uh, searching the cheney farm did you guys execute a search warrant there or did he willingly Again, I won't be able to divulge what we've done on the investigation, who we've spoken with, or where we have gone to conduct searches. I can tell you that we've done a number of searches throughout the, the county and abroad. I can tell you that those searches included uh, acreages, farms, homes, silos, barns, anywhere that uh, a lead would take us, that's where we're going to go, and that's where we're going to search. I mean, at this point, you believe she's abducted? At this point, we're identifying it still as a missing person. And so we are hoping to be able to, to find her soon and bring her back home soon. So Rick, you guys have been so tight lipped People are saying either you are on the verge of something big, perhaps an arrest, or you've got nothing. What is your message to the public? Our message is that continue to call in leads. We'll continue to run out those leads, and we will continue to do the best we can to bring back Molly. Again, I'm not going to let everyone know what we have and what we don't have, uh, but uh, we would welcome uh, as many phone calls and information as, as they feel relevant. As far as setting up this website, why do you believe this could be a game changer? This is something new you haven't done yet. Sure, it's just another avenue for people to, to use, another conduit to be able to provide information to us and the investigative team. And so some people are more techy than others. Some people would prefer to, to, to place a phone call, even write letters. We've received letters and postcards. And so this is just one more avenue for people to take, especially in this digital world that we live in. Again, we have this, this map that's interactive that they can pull up and take a look at the map. There's also a link for the tips that they can provide an anonymous tip if they so choose, as well as even, I think, maybe some telephone numbers. And so, again, it's just another conduit for the general public to be able to use to, to provide us information that will allow us to be able to vet that information. And again, I would emphasize that no matter how minute or minor they might think that information might be, it's important that they provide it to us and allow us to do the vetting process with that. Is there speculation that you guys interviewed Wayne Cheney because of his background on pleading guilty to stalking and violating um, restraining orders? Have you interviewed other people with questionable backgrounds? Have you talked to all the sex offenders in this area? Again, I'm not going to mention who we've spoken with. I mean, you guys can come up to that conclusion if you want to, but I'm not going to release any names or any of the information of, on the investigation itself. I'm just, I won't do that. Is there a chance she's stuck with someone she knows and maybe there's some sort of misunderstanding? Well, we're looking at all options, all possibilities, and uh, we will continue to do that until we are able to bring back Molly. How confident are you in the timeline that you're recommending? We feel very good about the, the timeline. Again, I won't be able to release that timeline, 
but uh, we, as like any other investigation, will come up with the timeline. We use that um, to, to come to a conclusion of the investigation. We do have a timeline in place. Is the public at risk? We don't feel that the public is at risk, per se. I mean, certainly um, that's something that people are concerned about. We understand that. But if we, as an investigative agency or an investigative team, felt that the public was at risk, we would certainly notify them of that. We would provide that information. And thus far, we haven't uh, found the need to do that at this point. Are tips still coming in as rapidly as they were before? They are. And I can tell you that uh, the investigative team has received in excess of 1,500, 1,500 tips, and that continues to climb. Um, I can tell you that as an investigative team, we've conducted over 500 plus interviews in this investigation thus far. I can tell you also that the Crime Stoppers uh, has uh, got the award up to, I think it's $366,414. And uh, that comes from 228 donors. And so certainly this has generated a lot of public interest. A lot of people are concerned, as are we. And um, we would, again, welcome the phone calls and the information so we can try to find her. Given how large the information would allow you to get better tips, though, if you were to release even a little bit to give people a better idea of what may have happened, but the quality of those tips would be better. And what was the first part of the question? I'm sorry. I don't think so, and the reason for that is we want to keep the investigation, um, protect the integrity of it, and so it is not something that we do with the DCI. We just don't provide the uh, information on the investigation as it is ongoing, and so again, that's why we emphasize the importance that if they think they know something, certainly provide it to us, and then we will we'll vet that out, as I mentioned to you before. How are you dividing resources? Large reward being offered here. Yes, sir. Well, we feel confident that it will ultimately lead to finding Molly, and so we, we haven't lost hope. We continue to um, strive to, to bring her back home safely, and so we are not frustrated. We just are, are diligent and will continue, continue to do so. Are yes, you, sir. Are you still letting that reward grow? For example, someone abducted, maybe they're waiting for that reward to continue growing since you're capping that reward? No, we're not going to cap anything. I mean, I'm, we don't think along that lines. We think that uh, if uh, money is generated to help bring her home, then we welcome that. I don't have any specifics for it, but I can tell you that uh, that's something that we are looking into and, and keeping an open mind on. And uh, I know that uh, trafficking is something that is discussed on a regular basis, but I don't have any stats for you. I wouldn't be able to provide that. And you said from the start right, that you guys are confident with the timeline. So that makes people say, well, you feel like you, you know where she was. So what's the gray area? What is it that you're missing if you're so confident with the timeline? Well, we can certainly provide it or have a timeline, uh, and that's what we use as part of our investigation, so I don't quite know what you're asking, but we, we feel confident of the timeline itself. So yes. you guys were able to trace the steps, you feel like you know where she was that day, is that a part of the timeline? We feel that's certainly something that we look into. I mean, we, as an investigative team, we will take a look from the, the, the early morning hours of that particular day on July 18th up to the evening hours. I mean, we, we try to get as much information and uh, as much as we can when it comes to these types of investigations. Well, sadly, we have. I mean, we have had uh, missing people before, and so uh, it's something that we deal with, and uh, sadly, we'll have to probably deal with in the future. Hope not, but it's, it's a possibility. But certainly, we have done these investigations before. And again, I want to emphasize that it's a joint investigation, uh, jointly with the Power Sheet County Sheriff's Office, the FBI, and as I mentioned to you earlier, uh, a number of agencies from across the country have actually reached out and willing to assist and help, which we would greatly appreciate. How are you dividing resources between the new website and your current tip line? Are we adding more personnel or is personnel kind of being reassigned? No, we, whatever personnel it takes to run out the leads, that's what we're going to use. And so uh, that's what we will continue to do as the investigation continues. The money, I don't know. I, I, I don't track that. My job is to, uh, to investigate crime, and so uh, the money's not an issue. We don't care about that. Our issue is trying to track down Molly. How is morale among your investigators? How are you keeping folks going? Oh, our morale is good. I mean, uh, we feel confident, and, and quite honestly, I, I appreciate the, 
the, the question, but it's really not about us. It's all about trying to find Molly, and, and again, we'll do everything we can to find her. Any other questions? I don't have a number for you right now. I know that I have a number of people out there right now running out leads as we speak, and so it, uh, it, it's ongoing and, and continues to uh, require a lot of manpower, and we will continue to dedicate that manpower for bringing Molly home. When would you lessen that manpower? What would have to happen? I don't foresee lessening any manpower at this point in time. We're going to continue to, to drive forward and whatever it takes. And so certainly there are other things that pop up and require attention, but that just means we bring other people in and do whatever it takes. Okay. Again, I would emphasize, if you could, uh, to the to the public to, to tap into findingmolly.iowa.gov. If you could push that out, that'd be great. We'd appreciate it. And we thank you for your time. Thanks. We've just been listening to investigators in Montezuma, Iowa, give us an update on the disappearance of 20-year-old Molly Tibbetts. They did not have any new information to share, but uh, one of the officers did say that someone may have come into contact with Molly in the days before her disappearance, who may or may not have been from the community, but who may have been familiar with it. They are asking for the public's help in scouring their memories to see if they ha can remember any details or information about any individuals or vehicles they may have seen in the area in those days preceding Molly's disappearance. There is also now a website, findingmolly.iowa.gov, with the latest on the investigation. And it is a place where people can go to give whatever tips or information they may have even if it is something that they do not consider relevant, the officers said, please let us determine what is relevant. Again, the search for 20-year-old Molly Tibbetts continues. We're going to take a quick break now. More stories when we come back. You're streaming CBSN.